What up guys, my name is Darius and on the online prosperity show today, we're going to talk about really getting clarity over decisions that you have to make in your starting entrepreneurship journey. You're going to get very clear on how you can go about creating content that gets people to come towards you rather than you going to them. And as well as some of the routines and systems that I personally use that allow me to scale my business to multi six figures at the age of 22. So with that, hopefully you enjoy the episode and get excited and watch it this welcome to yet another exciting episode of the online prosperity show and today i've brought you none other than the instagram wizard himself darius darius how are you doing my man Awesome, man. Thanks for having me on this show. And I can't wait to drop some value bombs onto your podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's the reason why we brought you here because listeners, Darius is actually called the Instagram wizard or the hardcore uh, organic scientist. Now, as an attraction strategist, he's proven track record of generating six figures for his clients and also for himself without ads has captured the attention and respect of top entrepreneurs and leaders and has also landed on multiple platforms such as the Speaker's Life Authority Project, Learning with Young Leaders, and now we have him on the Online Prosperity Show. Now, he's been testing and producing thousands of pieces of content in order to reach millions of people worldwide. And today, I'm hoping this piece of content that we have is going to blow you out of the water so you two can start creating for and relating to your audience without having to pay for ads. Now, Darius, when you look at, you know, the whole internet space and everything else that has to do with marketing, people always suggest that you have to pay to play. How have you become the Instagram wizard without having to pay a dime for your, um, you know, attraction or for your audience? That's a really great question. So <laughs> I got introduced into this space. I think the most common analogy that marketers will always say is that you place in $1 into ads and ads will give you $2 back or $3 back or $4 back. That's the most common analogy, right? And so I started out at a very young age, about 18, right? And then 18 years old, I didn't really have a lot of cash. I can remember I went to one of my first seminars. This one by one of the most like, sought after digital marketing gurus in the whole planet, I'll say. Right, pretty well known guy. Okay. And I can remember I went to his seminar, I paid 2K and 3K. I mean, back then when I was 18, I don't really have a lot of cash to begin with. Right. <laughs> I paid 2K and 3K, went to his seminar, and he was saying that, okay, in order for you to generate leads, right, this is a formula for ads, yada, yada, yada. And he says that, okay, every single day, you're going to place in $50 to $100 a day just to place into ads. And I was like, hold up, give me a sec. I went to look at my wallet. I took out my wallet, I was thinking, dude, I paid you like 2K and 3K. I don't think I have the cash to now run ads for $50 or $100 a day. I might actually go broke if I go about running my ads because I still have my living expenses. I can remember when I saw the bank account, I was less than four figures. It was like three digits, okay? Three digits on my bank account. I was looking at it. I was like, yeah, $50 and $100 a day is not going <laughs> to work for me. But as I told myself, there has to be another way out of this. There has to be another way out of this. And to be very honest, nowadays, people don't just know me for Instagram. Instagram is just one of the platforms that we happen to have success from. Uh, Facebook, we had success on as well. Twitter, we had success on as well. But the reason why I entered into this space is simply because I was very sick and tired of experts saying that, oh, the fastest way to grow to scale is just through ads. And you should just continue using ads, right? They always keep shoving down the whole term of, use ads, use ads to blow up, use ads to blow up. And I was very determined to find an alternative solution to go with the opposite way, to find a way to organically scale a business without spending a dime on ads. And that's how it landed me onto generating a ton of content on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, right? Thousand pieces of content will probably be more than that, uh, just based on each of the platform that we have. So yeah, that's exactly how I went into this whole road of, you know, getting and attracting clients without spending a dime on ads. Absolutely. Now, my very, um, you know, interesting uh, side of all of this is when, when people like myself were born, the internet was not present. But, you know, you, are, you were 18 when you started. 
okay is it something that you thought okay i'm not gonna go into college i'm not gonna go and do anything i'm just gonna get off and start becoming an entrepreneur or is it something that just fell on you that's a really good question <laughs> so this is interesting because I didn't think that I would be dropping out from college. <laughs> I did not think that I would, I would drop out from college simply because I always thought in the traditional Asian household is like get a good, go to a good school, get a good degree and then get a good career. Very traditional kind of mindset and pretty much my whole family, no one's dropped, dropped, no one has dropped out and everyone has generated with, uh, has graduated with either a degree or a master's. Right. So this fellow over here did not even graduate with anything and decided to drop out. <laughs> but at 18 years old, right, that's a very interesting question. Because I remember that I stumbled onto the whole like making money space. Right? At 18 years old, I was just hungry. I knew that I wanted to make some money. Right? Uh, it's just really the, the whole mindset of like, okay, I want to be able to get cash early so that I'm able to go and support my family in the future. Right. And so I just stumbled onto it. It's not the whole rich dad, poor dad book. And then I realized I have to become an entrepreneur. No, it was just that I wanted to make money. Right? I was just simply very hungry. I don't have an amazing backstory in terms of like, oh, wow, like I had this, I went into deep shit and then I decided I want to make money. No, <laughs> I was just this 18 young, 18 year old, young, hungry person that wanted to make cash. And just to uh, put some backstory to that as well. From the age of 13 to 18 years old, I was actually already working in an eight-figure trading company. Yeah, I went from all the way from being just an assistant and really ascending the ladder to become one of the program directors. And as program directors, what we do is pretty much we lead camps of over 100 participants around Southeast Asia in different camps like Singapore, Indonesia, and other uh, Southeast Asian countries as well. And so I had a lot of background when it came to coaching. And I knew that I wanted to set up a coaching business because I was quite good at coaching. And that was when I realized that there's a huge difference between being good at coaching and being good at building a coaching business. <laughs> Two different skill sets all together. One is a soft skills, the other one is a pure hard skill. So understanding marketing, sales, and yada, yada. And so when I came into this space, it was just to make money. I went into the whole Twitter space first, actually. And I went to Twitter and I just thought to myself, you know what? I wanted to just motivate and inspire someone out there. So I just produced like whatever thoughts I had in my head. Whatever that I wanted to say, I just tweet it out, right? Tweet it to existence, just tweet it and tweet it and tweet it and tweet it over and over again. And somehow magically, I was able to generate about like 10K followers within the first three months and then 20K, then 30K, then 40K, then 50K. I was thinking, hold on, wait, <laughs> wait a minute, what's actually happening over here? But because for me, I was just tweeting out whatever that I first thought of when it came to Twitter. And I told myself that, okay, since you work on Twitter, we work on Instagram then. I went to Instagram, did the same thing, which is basically posting of a lot of quotes and a lot of my thoughts. Uh, it flopped really, really badly. <laughs> it flopped really, really badly. I thought the same content that I post on Twitter will work the same way on Instagram, but it didn't work that way. Simply what happened every single day. I think that's more than probably like 99% of people out there. I produce three pieces of content every day for the next three months. If you calculate that, that's uh, 30, that's 90 days, 90 days time three, that's about 270 pieces of content, right? And I, after three months, I went on for another three months. So I went for a total of six months of just publishing three pieces of content every day, simply because Gary V said post content, right? So I decided to, okay, Gary V said it, I shall do it, right? Uh, but that's not really the wisest decision you should do. <laughs> and I explain later what you can actually do to move forward with your whole social media journey as well. Right. I posted 540 pieces of content within six months. What was super embarrassing was when I look at the followers, right? My followers were less than the number of pieces of content I produced. <laughs> I produced 540 pieces of content. I had 500 followers. Now something is definitely really, really wrong. And by the way, just for you guys to know, right? If you're producing like 90 pieces of content and you realize that you haven't really gotten traction, there's something that you're doing that's clearly wrong. And that's something that you have to realize is something that you need to know for yourself. But you can't just keep going on and on and on thinking that, oh, you know, one day I will make it. Because most of the time, if you realize for one straight month, you haven't gotten results yet, something isn't working. It is very important for you to evaluate that, hey, uh, this is what's not working and this was working well. And I think that most entrepreneurs, when they're starting out, they're too busy chasing the shiny object like what I was doing to stop, pause, and to reflect on what they've already been doing. 
because we're always so hungry, right? Hustle, hustle, hustle. That's the first thing that we always talk about. And so because we just keep thinking of hustling again and again, what happens is we get so trapped into looking at other people's perspective and other people's feedback. Gary V said this, Tony Robbins said this, Brandon Bashar says this, whatever thought leader told me this, so I should do it. And now I'm following after other people's opinion instead of following after what are my own thoughts. And a lot of times whenever I ask people who are just starting out, they hustle, hustle, I ask it, ask them, right? So actually, what do you, what are you doing currently? And where did this idea stem from? Most likely you'll say I've inspired from this so and so and so, right? And once I start talking about, okay, have you actually paused, stopped, and have you reflected on what works well and what didn't work well over the past three months or six months starting? Most of them say, oh yeah, actually I haven't. I just follow whatever advice it, they give and I do it. It doesn't work, I, I, I stop using it and I go, go on with something else. But a lot of times I realize that the fastest way to accelerate your business is having congruence in yourself. Before getting external feedback, you must always have internal feedback. And I think that's one big missing piece that many entrepreneurs are missing out because they always seek for coaches, mentors. It's cool. It's good to seek for coaches and mentors. I have my own coaches and mentors as well. But once you get trapped, right, in just thinking of ideas that people keep providing you, oh, Gary Vee said something cool. That person said something cool. Whatever thought leader said something cool. And so I'm going to do it. A lot of times you're doing actions that are maybe incongruent to who you are or incongruent to what your business is to begin with. There are some strategies that will not work with you simply because you might not live the same lifestyle. You might not like the same strategy. For example, a lot of people always like to use the you're only one thing away marketing strategy. Right? Heard, heard of that before, you're one thing away. You're one whatever, one funnel, one group, one whatever way. Right? I never ever liked that idea simply because I do not believe that you're one thing away. I believe that yes, you can make a decision and it improves your life. But trust me, it's not going to solve every fucking problem that you have in your life, right? <laughs> but people think that, oh, I'm just this one magic pill. If I take the magic pill and I pop it in, I'm like, yeah, I become like, I become Superman the next day. But that's just really misaligned marketing. And people think, right, that they can go about creating a similar angle. That hey, if you watch my podcast, you will immediately transform and you'll become someone that's totally new. That's total bullshit, right? <laughs> How can you just watch something and straight away know that, hey, you know, my life is going to totally change. Yeah. And so to me, uh, it's very important for, especially starting entrepreneurs, to understand right, what you actually like, what you actually don't like, what you need and what you don't need. It's freaking important. Because whenever people come and look for me and, 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 and they start to admire the amount of work rate that I place into my business, right? because on a daily basis, I place about 12 to 14 hours in my business. And to be very honest, I tell my clients this the same way, that you shouldn't look to model after how I go about running my business. You shouldn't look to model after how I go about running a business. Why? Simply because it can be unsustainable for some people. There are some, some people who try to copy after what I do, and I've heard stories before, <laughs> and they burn out really, really quick. They burn out really, really quick. And the only reason why I'm able to sustain at such a high level as well is because I have a lot of purpose and drive behind what I do. And it's a lot of an upbringing kind of thing as well. I don't think that, okay, just because you have motivation, you have a lot of motivation, that's why you're able to work the same number of hours as me. I think it's a lot to do with how you were brought up when you're younger as well. And because I was hustling and hustling all the way since I was 13 years old, that was kind of like the mindset that got me into it. And I love the work that I do, of course, that's one big thing. Uh, but this is an important message I have to uh, have to start the show with, right? That don't chase and don't fantasize after whatever thought leader that you're thinking of. Most of the time, what you really need is congruence for yourself. A lot of times we're starting entrepreneurs ask them and ask them a very clear question. So actually, what do you want? But when I ask this question, they'll probably tell me like, well, it'll be like a 10 minute speech. Oh, I want this. I want that. I want this. I want. So what do you actually want? Right? Because you can't have everything that you want within the next one month or one year. Right? It's impossible to hit every. And, and trust me, it's a very interesting litmus test. Go about asking your friend, right? what do you actually want? When someone goes about sharing, sharing like, and it goes on and on and on and on, usually that means they're not clear on what they want. People who are absolutely clear on what they want, they tell you, hey, I got these three to five goals. Let me share with you these three to five goals. This, 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 this. Why? Because it's all aligned to me. I know what I want. I know what I need. But people who are not clear with what they want and what they need, most of the time, they won't be able to get their goals as well. Simply because if you have 100 goals, right? That's kind of like splitting 100% of energy and putting 1% of energy into each goal. You're going to get 1% of the results. Don't expect to get great results if you're just facing 1% energy each of the goal, right? So yeah. it's very important for you to be very clear of what you want, what you need, instead of fantasizing about, oh, what they will say. To be very honest, if you're listening to this podcast now, 
please don't <laughs> please don't look at me and think like, well, Darius is like a freaking awesome dude and I want to like have the same life as him. No, please don't. I highly encourage you to have a high level of self-awareness by always reflecting every single day. And reflecting every single day what works well for your business, what doesn't work well. What you feel is aligned to your business, what you feel is not aligned. Because I kid you not, um, a lot, I, I know a lot of hustlers and because my clients are people that are scaling from six to seven figures in their business, right? And it's because they have been hustling, hustling all the way to start, all the way until building to a six-figure business, then moving to the next stage of seven figures, they start to realize that they have incongruency in their business. And when they start to realize they have incongruency in the business, then they start questioning, oh shit, why did I build this business? Right? They start to think like, oh shit, I just wanted to like, it was a good way to make cash. And after I could make cash, I wanted to scale it. After I scale it, I start asking myself like, actually, what do I actually want? And I see this way too often because people hustle, hustle, it's great. You hustle, hustle all the way, right? But what do you actually want? What do you actually need, right? Do you have clarity over what your next three years or your next five years or your next 10 years will look like for you? How do you want your business to run? Because I always repeat this same sentence. Your business is always built on your preferences. But sometimes people get too sucked in by so many ideas that other people throw out. They're like, oh, I'll apply this, I'll apply this in my business, I'll apply that. A lot of these ideas are not congruent to them in the first place, right? Maybe they start sharing like, oh, you're just one thing away, even though they don't believe in that. It happens. It really happens that way. And I've seen some uh, introverts, right? I'll give you another example. I've seen some introverts, right? They try to be very flamboyant, to be very extroverted, to talk really, really loudly. But it's not them. It's not them. And after a while, they get very tired. They get very exhausted. The reason why I love to do podcasts and I enjoy sharing my wisdom on podcasts is because I love talking. <laughs> Since young, I couldn't stop talking. And when my teachers told me you stop talking, I went up to teach, uh, teach in front of the whole class. And after I got sent to the principal's office uh, later. So yeah, <laughs> once again, a lot of the things that I do, it fits me because uh, I know what are my own strengths. Okay, so here's an activity that for all of your viewers can probably do. It's shifting into this, uh, four, uh, shifting into this four zones of reflection. And this is what I do every quarter with my team, with my clients as well. Our clients maybe once a year, right? But with my team, I do this every quarter, okay? It's understanding four things. What is your zone of genius? What is your zone of excellence? What is your zone of competency? And zones of incompetency. We call this G-Kai, G-E-C-I, right? <laughs> zone of genius, excellence, competency, and incompetency. Now, let me explain how this works. Zone of genius is starting by understanding what is it that you can effortlessly and naturally do. That you know that you're better than someone. If someone were to start on the same line as you, you will finish faster than the person. It becomes naturally to you. It's not like something that's hard to understand. Zone of genius. Second is excellence, which means you're great at it, but not necessarily you enjoy doing it. Because a lot of times we are great at certain things, but that doesn't mean we enjoy doing it. Right, like I am great at building quite uh quite a few things in my businesses. It's just that I don't really enjoy doing it. I give you an example. I am great at creating posts and creating content. I've been creating over thousands right, before my team went to take over me, right? <laughs> but I don't exactly enjoy placing out content every single day to write and write and to type and type and type. It's a bit too much. I rather just write when I feel like writing. Right, so that's in my zone of excellence. What's the zone of genius? My zone of genius is speaking training, coaching, what I'm doing right now, <laughs> right? So it's very important for you to know what are your skills in each of these zones. So moving on to the third zone, zone of competency. Zone of competency is what you are average at or maybe just above average. Basically, you do around the same work rate as other people when it comes to that skill, okay? Uh, and then moving on to the last one, which is zone of, incom zone of incompetency. Incompetency is whatever that you suck at. Like I can honestly admit, I suck at tech things. You might be thinking, wait, there was a yeah, yeah, young chat, right? Shouldn't young people be great at tech? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm pretty bad at tech. There was this one time, right, that I went to change something in my website because I was thinking, oh, you know, I don't want to burden my team to just change this small detail. I want to change this one sentence on my website. I was thinking, you know what, I'm just going to go in and change. What happened was when I went in to change and when I went out of it, the whole page was basically messed up. And then my team had to go and take hours just to go and reset. I'm like, 
I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I was thinking, how can I screw up that way? Like, I was just changing <laughs> one word. I, saw, I really thought, you know, I was like thinking to myself, this is going to be easy, right? I'm quite sure it'll work. I went in, I was like looking through, I was like, hmm, I'm not very sure. Then I went to go and search on Google, right? Just be resourceful and search for the answer. I was thinking, okay, I got the answer. And then I just changed a few words. And then like later on, my, my team actually texted me like, hey, dude, the page is kind of messed up. I'm like, uh, Wait, but I just changed like one or two words. That's what I wanted to do. I literally, <laughs> the context was I really wanted to just change one or two words. And from that point onwards, I just knew that, okay, I have to upgrade. I definitely have to upgrade my skills in web, uh, in, in terms of technology. And I have been, that was, as, that was I think two years ago when I first started out as well. <laughs> Close to when I was first starting out. Yeah. Absolutely. And so yeah. I realized that that was my weakness, right? And understanding there are some weaknesses that you want to improve in. For example, for some of you guys, maybe your incompetency, right, is that you suck at marketing. But the thing is, you will need to know marketing. You need to develop marketing. There are some, there are some skills that are currently in your zone of incompetency that you want to develop. I know people will talk about, oh, you know, don't focus on your weaknesses. Just focus on, just focus on your strength. But there are some skills in your zone of incompetency that you will want to develop and you have to develop in some form of way as well. Especially if you want to go about marketing your business, you should know how to write copywriting, right? You should know how to do marketing, right? You should know how to do lead generation, lead nurturing. These are like fun fundamentals needed in your business, right? So it's really important to understand that you have these four columns, right? Do your best to focus more on your zone of genius most of the time. I'll say to every, every starting entrepreneur, every leader, it's still the same thing. I'll say always focus on your zone of genius. Anything else, go and outsource it or eliminate it or automate it either way, yeah? And then if there's anything that's in your zone of competency or incompetency, but you want to make it to become a zone of genius, go ahead and develop it. I don't think there's anything to stop you from doing that. Yeah, but of course, there are some things that you clearly don't like. If you really don't like that, I don't see a need for you to go and develop it. Yeah, but if you like it, but you suck at it, go ahead and develop it, right? I don't have any, I don't, have, I don't, I don't see a need to hold back in terms of like, oh, I don't work on my weaknesses. No, there are some weaknesses that you should own, should master and should improve. Yeah. So I think that's a really long answer to your question. <laughs> I kind of deviated away from your question as well, am I right? <laughs> Absolutely. No, I really, really appreciate that. And this is just one thing that I picked up on while you were talking there, uh, Darius. You have an innate passion in the things that you're doing, which which is very riveting. So whatever you're doing, keep at it. Now, let's just really go back to maybe five minutes um into the podcast <laughs> <laughs> you did mention that you uh, stumbled upon a few experts and then you followed their way and then you also then realized that um the way that they were doing um you know or ex you know uh, showing up in the world is not exactly who you are and also was not a congruent to use your words um with what it is that you want to achieve or be do and have now i want us to really be um very helpful in this podcast in as much as a lot of people are maybe on their way to start how do you notice when an expert is either a snake oil sales salesperson and how do you actually know if an expert is really worth what it is that they're talking about and how have you been able um also to borrow from you to have that litmus test of knowing who to follow and how to um you know you know um take in whatever they say with a grain of salt or actually go in and actually implement so that's I know you've got very long answers, so I've put in three questions in there just so <laughs> that <laughs> we can go with it. Okay, so the two questions are what again? So basically, how do you spot an expert that's a snake okay. oil says person? Okay. And how do you know what to follow and what not to follow? And okay. basically, uh, yes, how, how can you, um, you know, sort of um, eliminate those that are not uh, worth Funny. it from your newsfeed, etc. Okay, so that's a really great question to ask me, by the way, because I spent over more than hundred thousand dollars just on causes, on coaches, and masterminds alone. Yeah. So first thing to understand is um, I'm gonna put out a few list of criteria. It can become a checklist by itself. <laughs> first thing, right? Uh, to spot whether a mentor is right for you. Um, let me. How about maybe I answer the snake oil salesman first. First of all, I don't really want to go about exposing whatever gurus that are out there. It's not really my character. And I'll explain later why it's not my character and what my company mission and purpose is as well. Right? 
for me, it's very easy to tell if someone is a fake, if they do not practice what they preach. And there are a lot of people out there that actually do not practice what they preach. For example, if I'm going to help you to scale and get clients without ads, I myself should be doing the same thing as well. But if you see me ever using an ad, please call on me. I, I allow you to call on me. I call you and say, hey, you know, this Davis is a bloody asshole, fake shit, whatever it is. Why? Because I have never, ever spent a dime on ads before. And I will never, ever spend a dime on ads. I haven't and I will never, right? And so understand that for some of the experts, you have to really clearly know whether they are practicing what they preach. But whatever it is that they're selling, they should have results. They must have results. And one very important distinction is not to just look at the testimonials, it's to really look at the concrete results. If someone has a really, really great testimonial barrel, but they have like 100 people that says really, really good stuff about them, that doesn't mean that the expert gets you results. Okay, there are four levels of proof. There are four levels of proof, just for you guys to understand. First level of proof, right, is basically just satisfactory. Basically, people say, you know, Darius is good, Darius is great, this program works. Right, basically, it's just being happy with what's uh, being provided, the value that's given to me. That's the first level only. But people think that, oh, you know, that level is really good because this guy got hundreds of testimonials. To me, testimonials with just words of saying, oh, this is great, the solution is good, is worthless to me. Going on to the second level, results. Which means, let's say if I tell you that you can, uh, let's say if I guarantee you that, hey, you at least make five figures out working with me or at least six figures out working with me, there should be people who have gotten their results. And you should be able to know what's the percentage of success rate in getting that result as well. Not saying that the person has to guarantee you, right? But at least you know that there's a percentage of success rate for that person. For example, for us, uh, sounds very fake and sounds very get rich quick scheme, but I'll explain later why it works that way. We have a hundred percent success rate. We have a hundred success, hundred percent success rate with everything we do. And I don't think any other expert in the market can say that. Uh, the reason why I say I have hundred percent success rate just to know as well. I previously did not have 100% success rate. So it's very interesting. I previously did not have 100% success rate. It's probably about 90% success rate in my previous offer. So previously I had two offers in my whole coaching, uh, coaching company, right? I dropped the offer that had 90% success rate simply because I realized that that offer wasn't best in serving our clients. So I totally dropped it and focused on the 100% success rate offer. Yeah, I'll share a little bit more later if you want to know about uh, creating offers as well. But moving on to the third level of proof to go and look at how experts are really great at what they do is transformation. It's transformation, which means right that, that for, from this expert alone, these people are not able just to get results, but they have changed in terms of the identity. They have changed in the way of how they look at the world, how they go about showing up to the world, right? how they go about living their life. That's the third one. And it's a bit hard to distinguish this because the only way you can tell is when someone actually shares it. Someone shares it through like an actual testimony or say, that, well, you know, before that, I was someone that's very low confidence, someone that I didn't, even, I didn't even want to go about prospecting people. I was scared of closing people. And now I'm closing five-figure deals, high five-figure deals easily every single day. And you can see that transformation and together with the results, that's the third level of proof. Now, the last level of proof, right, is knowing that this expert, right, has actually trained many other experts in the whole industry as well. Yeah, that's the last level of proof. And not many people have this last level of proof also, just, just for you guys to know. Because it's not easy for one, for an expert to have many other experts learning from this one expert. Right? I'm quite sure you know that a lot of coaches that you see right now only came about because they learned from a coach and then that coach probably learned from another coach and a lot of times it's like kind of like a snake and ladder kind of thing all the way from the top and go all the way to the bottom <laughs> but it's very important for you to identify who's the one at the top and who are they learning from who have they been uh, executing together with because once you know that hey this person has actually helped these other expected and reputable leaders in the market now i think it's quite safe to say that that person is also trustworthy yeah but it's very important most importantly is the part on results. I think that's something that most people overlook. Most people just look at testimonials and go like, hey, this person, the testimonial is really good. And, and that's it. That's a reason for that's a reason for going it. But then they realize that they don't get results after that. Yeah, that was the point. Can you imagine you buy into like an online business coaching program and then your business isn't generating cash, but you feel happy? That, that doesn't really make sense, right? <laughs> that doesn't really make sense. So I, 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 I shouldn't call it an online business coaching program. I should just call it an online happiness program. I make you happy. I make you smile. You give me a great testimonial and then you can fuck off, right? Absolutely. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. 
<laughs> but I can tell you that 90% of the programs out there are like this. 90% of the programs out there are like this. I have gone through myself before. Once again, my whole goal here isn't to expose someone out there, but just to make sure that y'all don't, y'all, y'all don't make the same mistake as me. Yeah. So hopefully that four level of proof will help you to understand what's the level of credibility the expert has. Absolutely. Great stuff. And also, um, one other thing is for you to actually get organic results, you have to constantly be putting out content and making sure that uh, people are engaging with that content um, so much that it's providing them with value. Now, can you just walk us through maybe your content creation process that actually keeps you, first of all, top of mind with your customers, and then second of all, it continuously feeds you with inspiration so you're not just posting uh, content for content's sake. Okay, awesome. So this is what uh, I teach my clients and I teach on uh, to a lot of other people as well. It's called giving a pep talk on your social media. Just remember PEP, personality, expertise, and proof. Okay, now dive into each of this so that you know how to go about applying this. So first of all, it's showing your personality through your content. And personality through your content is best shown through not just stories, but stories that highlight your values, highlights your beliefs, highlights your vision, highlights your mission, highlights your purpose, right? Everything that's around your identity highlights it. So if you tell a story for no reason, right? You tell a story like, hey, I just bought a light today. Like people will be like, okay, so what? <laughs> but what if I say, hey, I bought this light and this light was something that I always wanted to buy since when I was 18, but I did not have the cash to buy. Now there's probably a story behind that, right? There's probably a reason why you actually wanted to get that light so badly. Rather than just, hey guys, I bought a light today. Doesn't showcase any of your values, doesn't showcase any of your beliefs, your vision, your mission, and your purpose. So there's a lot to do with your personality, right? And also personality is showing what you do on an everyday basis. I think a lot of times people mistake that showing a personality in your life means being very flamboyant, being very extroverted. I got to keep sharing and sharing, like creating buzz on the whole Instagram or Facebook or anywhere that you're at. But having personality is not about creating buzz. Having personality is really showcasing transparently who you really are, which means what you what you do on a daily basis. I can tell you that my my routines are quite boring. <laughs> my routines are quite boring, right? I wake up at 7:30 a.m. I journal down, I reflect down, I set intention for the day, right? Then I go about executing my first big task of the day in the afternoon, right after this podcast, I'm gonna go hit the gym, right? <laughs> there are routines that happen in my day, and I usually just uh, record it down to my stories on Instagram or Facebook, or whether is it I decided to uh, post an actual post on my feed that, hey, today I went to the gym and I learned something new, whatever it is. But personality is really shown based on what you do on a daily basis. Because when people start to know what you do on a daily basis, they start to know what makes up in your life as well. And your personality is not just you. Your personality is also surrounded by what happens around you. Why? Because your environment is always stronger than your willpower. If your environment is always stronger than your willpower, you have to understand that what makes your identity and how people view you is based on your environment as well. If I only know you prosper for being you, that's, that's all, right? And I don't know anything that goes on. I'm seeing the books at the background, right? <laughs> There's a ton of books at the background and I don't see all of this. I only see you, right? You as someone right. that's keeps on smiling, have a very high energy, very passionate in what you do, ask big questions. I only know you, but I don't know your environment. It's very hard for me to know how you behave on a daily basis. I don't know how you live on a daily basis, but just based on looking at the books, at least I know someone's an avid reader, right? <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it is that you do on a daily basis as well. Maybe you're someone that's really hardcore. You wake up at 4 a.m. every day. You wake up at 5 a.m. every day. And the first thing you wake up at 5 a.m., you decide to run 2 k.m. Who knows? I won't know. <laughs> I won't know until you actually share with me. So I think a lot of people always think that, oh, I have to be flamboyant. No, not really. Uh, really go and reflect on what are the routines that you do on a daily basis. What do you do on a daily basis? How do you live your life? These are things that can be shared with people as well. Learning lessons can be shared with people, right? And last but not least, also based on what is in your external environment. What is around your external environment? Whether is it like your, your business partner or maybe your wife, your girlfriend, maybe your parents, right? Maybe your friends, who you're hanging out with. Why? Because it's always very important, right, to know who are the people surrounding Darius not just Darius alone, right? Because if you only know Darius alone, it's very hard for me to remember you. But if let's say 
I know that hey, Davis has his, has like has his uh, beautiful parents, has a beautiful girlfriend, whatever it is, right? Whatever that happens around his life, and I know these connections as well. Immediately, right, it stays top of mind when it comes to your prospects. Now your prospects will remember that hey, you know, Davis hits the gym. Hey, when they go to the gym, they'll be reminded of me now. <laughs> Hopefully, none of you guys are hitting the gym and then start thinking of me, yeah, please. <laughs> you don't have to think the of lifting, me. At the gym, lifting right? heavy but, things and <laughs> saying, Darius, Darius. Yeah, yeah and I, I just started going to the gym only like one, one month ago. I just hired a personal trainer to help me, uh, help me in my whole fitness journey. But these are the things that you want to go about sharing with people so that people know what's your personality. So understand that personality is not just you, but the environment around you, what happens around you, what you do on a daily basis that people want to know. So I think I covered very intensively when it comes to personality. Let's move on to expertise. Expertise is one of the easiest ones to showcase, to be very honest. And I never understood why people feel that they feel like imposter syndrome in some form of way. I just have to share this. If you ever feel like you are imposter, you feel like you're not good enough, usually the only reason why you feel like you're not good enough is because right, you do not have clarity over something that you do not know. Imposter syndrome is a, most of the time when it comes to imposter syndrome, it's about getting clarity over something which you do not know at the current moment. Right? Let me give you an example. Right? Let's say I fear, I fear closing this client because maybe I'm not good enough for this client. Right? My question would be then, why do you feel you're not good enough for this client? Right? What is that one thing that you're maybe you're missing? A lot of times, right, imposter syndrome happens because maybe you're 99% ready, but you're missing that 1% missing piece, and your brain is signaling to you and telling you that, hey, I'm just telling you the body to, to be nervous and like be afraid because I'm missing this one piece. But if I'm able to know what this one piece is, I'll be fully ready, right? Most likely you'll be confident in what you do. So a lot of times imposter syndrome is all about getting clarity over which that you do not know. And a lot of times you can't really do it by yourself. And that's why we have coaches and why we have mentors ourselves as well. Right, so that we know what's that one missing piece that we're missing. Because once we know what's that one missing or two missing pieces that we're missing, I'm very confident in executing what it is to move forward. Right. So where was I? I was connecting this to something. My brain, my brain just checked off. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. So, I mean, at the end of the day, Darius, this is so much gold and very, very important, especially for people that are looking to expand their audience because through testing and producing thousands of pieces of content and reaching out to millions of people worldwide, Darius has actually managed to attract over 250,000 followers in just one and a half years. And that's a very big feat, especially when we're looking at how people are so bombarded with information and content and they're narcissistic in as much as they want to um, look at themselves first before they look outside. But none of this or stuff that he's been talking about in the show already, as you can tell how well versed he is in this subject, or you might think that he's bragging, it doesn't really matter much to Darius. Because the real reason why people have been seeking him out and why people talk to him is none of these followers or these processes that he's been giving us. Darius has a real gift for everyone, including you watching this show right now, his strategic attraction system. Now, Darius, tell us a little bit about what happens in this strategic attraction system and how you can help uh, people attract their best clients, their team, or the life uh, that they absolutely love. Okay, that's a really, really big question. <laughs> that's a really, really big question. And before, before I answer that question, let me just uh, finish up what I was saying just now. I talked about PP, right? Just yes. for the viewers, in case the audience starts to, starts to realize, that, hey, wait, Davis, you haven't, you haven't finished it yet. It's kind of incomplete. <laughs> so going back to it, uh, expertise is really just showcasing what mistakes you have made before. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people are too that are overthinking and overanalyzing that, oh, I must be at the top of my leg in order to share my experience. I think the easiest way to share expertise is by sharing whatever mistakes that you have or whatever lessons that you have learned. Because the easiest way to educate someone, to educate your child, to educate someone of your friend is by what? Going through a certain life experience before, a life situation, a business situation before. And that's how you can best educate other people. Right? That's how I started my journey as well. Right? And that's to do with uh, expertise. Moving on to the last one in terms of proof, 
proof is a really big one to understand that proof is all about that four levels of proof that I talk about. You need that four levels of proof so that people can start to trust you. The same way that you go about identifying whether someone is great or someone is just like starting out or just good, not great, right? It's through that four levels of proof. So if currently you realize that, hey, I'm only at level one, then you want to start thinking, how can I move to level two? How can I move to three and four? Because once you hit level four, most likely at the top of your own industry already. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully that answers that question, that previous, uh, ending that previous question. Now, this question is a really, really big one. Uh, and I, I know you got this, I know you got this from my website as well. <laughs> it's a really, really big one as well, because what we do as a strategic attraction system and now strategic scaling systems as well, has many, many different moving parts that I can't really go through everything in this podcast, not because I don't want to, but because it's going to take days or weeks. Actually, it will take honestly months. I don't want to say days, it will take months. I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm not joking. It will take months. We we'll might, go we might run out of tape. So just give us a high level <laughs> overview or like an elevator speech of what the strategic uh, attraction system actually entails. All right, awesome. So first is understanding how you can, uh, how you can, un how you can meet three promises actually deliver to all of our clients. So the first one is getting people to naturally stand up. The first one is to get people to naturally stand up. Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, okay, scale of 1 to 10, you let me know of, uh, or whoever that's listening, you can go about just self-vetting as I go through this scale. On a scale of 1 to 10, when it comes to naturally standing out, just want to ask, right, where do you see yourself on this scale of 1 to 10 when it comes to naturally standing out, right? So number 1 to number 3 is when you feel like you're just another one in the market. If you feel like you're just another one in the market, then most likely you're on the range of one to three, okay? And then next is from the scale of four to six, right? On the scale of four to six, when it comes to naturally standing out, that means that you feel like, hey, uh, when it comes to naturally standing out, I just feel like I'm a known professional. People know me and people know I'm good at what I do. So you're on a scale of four to six. Now, on a scale of seven to eight, that means you're top of mind. Top of mind means that if someone were to go about asking like, hey, um, who do you know that's great at organic marketing? Then I'll probably be at the top three to five people when people go about recommending. Last but not least, you're on a scale of nine to 10. On a scale of nine to 10 means you're the only logical choice, which means if someone talks about organic marketing, the person will only introduce Darius and only Darius, that's it. Right? So on a scale of one to 10, where are you on that scale? And uh, the reason why I'm going to talk about this skill is so that you can go about improving on that skill as well later on. I'll do my best to provide some value on that area as well. Second, right, the second promise that we deliver for all of our clients is to effortlessly acquire. So the first one is to naturally stand out. The second one is to effortlessly acquire. So back again on a scale of 1 to 10. Okay, on a scale of 1 to, of one to 10, if your scale of 1 to 3, right, means that you have random clients that come to you and these clients are quite hard to deal with. How many have have you gotten like problematic clients before? <laughs> they're, right? they're... You probably have. You probably have gotten, right? Probably you have gotten problematic clients. And maybe, maybe it's not exactly very problem problematic, but not really people that you want to work with in the long run. So you're on a scale of one to three. Now, on a scale of four to six, that usually means that you have inconsistent high paying clients. And that means that you fall in the range that people are already paying you a high, high sum of cash, but is inconsistent. Some weeks you have, some months you have, some months you totally do not have. That was what I was like when I first started my business. And then on a scale of seven to eight, which means every single week, every single month, you have high quality, high paying clients coming to you. And then on the last scale of nine and 10, you have you are overbooked with dream clients. Okay, so it's very important for you to understand which scale you're at later because I'll talk about, uh, if time permits, right, and you allow me, I'll talk about how you can move on to the next level for each of these three promise. Okay, for the third promise that we give our clients is to create breakthrough impact. To create breakthrough impact, right? On a scale of one to 10, once again, on a scale of one to three, usually you have satisfied clients, just satisfied clients. It's the four levels of proof, actually. Second level, you just have happy clients. Third, cli uh, third level, you have results and transformational clients. And then fourth level, you have world-changing clients. These are people that become market leaders or industry leaders. Yeah. So these are the three promises that we actually go about delivering for every single one of our clients. And I can firmly say that uh, what we do does not feed probably 95% of the people in the market because I only serve client-obsessed coaches and consultants uh, that want to work with me. And I have a very stringent procedure of who I want to work with as well. 
because these are people that are usually very, very dedicated to their business and are willing to commit an obscene amount of hours into their business in order to scale it. Yeah, so if you're someone that you are really someone that likes to commit a lot, and I mean COVID really, really very heavily, you most likely won't be a good fit working with us as well. So to understand this is that my solution does not work for everyone. And that's how we are able to guarantee a 100% success rate. Sounds weird, right? My solution is not able to work for everyone. That's why there's 100% success rate. <laughs> but it's true because I heavily qualify who I want to work with. I only work with people who have a certain level of standards. So this is something for a lot of you guys to understand. If you want to attract your dream clients, it's very important to get clear of what standards that you want to have in your business and what standards you want your clients to have. For example, you want your clients to always show up on time. You always want your clients to dedicate the amount of time for coaching or dedicate the amount of time to work, right? You want your client to be committed to mastery rather than chasing a shiny object. You want your clients to understand the importance of fundamentals instead of chasing another shiny object. But there are many different standards that we have in our business. For example, one very stringent, right? One very stringent quality for our clients is that they should be client obsessed. They need to be constantly thinking about their clients and they need to constantly be adding as much value to the, uh, as possible to our clients. Simply because I don't work with people who just tell me that, hey, uh, the reason why I'm better than my competitors is because I care for them more. I will, I will always ask them, how do I know that you care more for your competitors? Because your competitors will probably say the same thing. The only way that I know you truly care about me is if you do something that the market doesn't. That's the only way I know I'm going to care. Uh, and that's the only way I know that you're, you're caring for me. But the thing is, most people do not have that answer. If I ask someone down, like, and I ask most entrepreneurs I meet, like, what's something that you do that the market doesn't provide? They're going to get stuck. <laughs> They're going to get stuck. And actually, it's a very good question you can ask for your podcast guests as well, because that is really pulling out what's the X factor. That's really pulling out the X factor. So the only reason why we have 100% success rate with our offer currently as well is simply because we have a very high and very stringent process of who can come in. And I have uh, about 20-30% of people that I meet that I actually reject from coming in, even though they want to work with me. That's quite a lot of money that's left on the table, but I'm fine with it because I purely just want to hit the 100% success rate. That's it. Yeah. So Absolutely. hopefully that answers your questions in terms of what the high-level process looks like. Oh, oh, fantastic. And I'm, I really appreciate um, you know, that you have given us all this information. Now, Towards the end, maybe you can let us know how people can either apply or see if they're fit uh, in order for them to start working with you. Is there a way that um, people can uh, maybe start looking into or see how they can actually see if they, they can start working with you in order yeah, can for awesome, them? Man. Yep. Yeah, awesome, man. Uh, the easiest way is to go to strategicscalingsystems.com, strategicscalingsystems.com, right? And basically, you can either join our Facebook community group where basically I do live trainings every single month. I answer some questions that you guys have in the community. So if you want to just know me and connect me at a deeper level, see whether, hey, is this guy fucking legit or not? Right? Or should I go about slandering him on my, on my Facebook or social media wall? Whichever it is that you choose to do, right? <laughs> Check out the Facebook community group. That's totally free, right? Go to strategicscalingsystems.com. You'll see a button. You can go to Facebook group or... You can choose to go and watch one of my trainings. And one of my trainings, I break down exactly what we do to help people hit their first 10K to 20K a month. Yeah. So that's two ways you can go about doing it, but it's all through strategicscalingsystems.com. That's the easiest way to go about it. Fantastic. Now, you talk a lot about clarity. And for me, clarity is something that came a little bit later on in life. Uh, I must admit, I'm maybe 10 or so years um, your senior, and I can seriously remember when I was 22, I don't think I was able to tie my own laces. I don't think I was able to write my own name. And all I was just doing was drinking alcohol, smoking and chasing girls. Now, how do you have so much clarity in what you want to do, who you want to work with and how you want to give them results, especially at an age where a lot of people are probably turning around the couch right now um you know playing video games or just binge watching netflix um you know what waiting for the next thing to happen in their life 
That's a really good question. That's the first question that I've gotten out of many podcasts that I've been. <laughs> Usually people will ask like, how did you achieve that much at 22 years old? I'm like, mm. <laughs> that's a long story. Also. But that's a great question about clarity. Um, it's a lot about motives. It's a lot about routines, a lot about systems. That's the reason why we call ourselves strategic scaling systems. Like, why is it called system? Why our gift is system? Uh, it's not just systems in business, but systems in life as well. Systems in life. And to me, systems is what set you free in life. People always think that systems are what restrict you down. Not true. Systems are what set you free. Let me give you an example. Right? If I did not have a system, right, in terms of booking a podcast, for example, like getting on your show, I don't have my team to help me fill in all my information. What does that mean? I probably have to spend one hour, two hours filling up all the podcast applications, sending messages to people, right, connecting with so many people when I can be using that time doing something else. Right? But I, am not, I, am, I don't have to do it because I have a system and using this system, I can just delegate it to my team member to do it, right? So same thing to do with life, right? We have to build systems around our life if you want to have certainty and clarity over what you do. When you do not have systems, what happens is that you're probably doing like a new thing every single day. Oh, this idea is cool. I'll do it. This idea is cool. I'll do it. Every single day, it's a new, a new possible, a new day, a new whatever, whoever it is, right? <laughs> new, new year, new me again, all over again, right? <laughs> so... To get to the level of clarity I had, right, it's really through one simple practice of reflection. And I think that's something that people emphasize a lot about. People talk about it a lot, but what's commonly said is not commonly applied. Yeah, what's commonly said is not commonly applied. Because whenever I start asking people, like, hey, do you actually reflect? And these are top entrepreneurs, right? People earn six figures or seven figures. Do you constantly reflect? Uh, maybe some days yes, maybe some days no. <laughs> and you can go about asking your whole fan group whether they reflect on a daily basis with three to five intentional questions just asking themselves over and over again. Right? One great question I ask myself every single day is why do I exist? Why does my business exist in this industry? Why am I still continuing to work on this business? I can choose to give up. Right? I can choose to give up. Why am I still continue, continuing to work on this business? That's just one of the questions. Another question I ask myself is what's one thought or decision that I could have made better today. Another one could be, what's one lesson I learned from myself or someone else today as well, right? So these are the three usual questions I go about answering every single day. The fourth extra question will always be asking myself, what is a special trait that only I can do that no one else can? And I keep really just answering it again and again. People think that this is something that, oh, I must buy a really, really fancy notebook. By the way, this is not even the notebook that I use to write down my reflection. <laughs> People think that they have to create, they have to buy a fancy notebook, have an iPad, use Notion, whatever app, whatever reflection app just to write down the reflections. I do my reflections on Google Sheet. <laughs> I do my reflections on Google Sheet. It's really plain. It looks very unsexy. It looks unsexy. It looks very boring. Uh, it looks like it's something that you don't want to do. But a lot of times, what you don't want to do is usually what's best for you. And that's what discipline is. Discipline is doing something, right, that you don't like you don't like to do, but you do it because it benefits you. You might not like to do it, but it benefits you. And over time, reflection, uh, you, will, you will learn to enjoy reflection, I'll say that. Sometimes people don't appreciate reflection when they first start because they think like, oh, I must, I must keep penning down my thoughts and it's uncomfortable. But... It is what it is. If you want to do what 99% of people don't have or don't do, right, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be painful. It's always going to be messy when you first start. Any habit right, that you start will always be very messy when you first start it. But over time, the mess becomes a whole clear path for you to go forward. And I think that's something that's very underlooked by people. People always want to have a magic pill. And that's why I can, tell, I can firmly say that I have no magic pill. I can firmly say I have no magic pill. Then people are like, but you have 100% success rate. Yeah, I have 100% success rate, but it's a, a lot of credit goes to my clients as well. A lot of credit goes to my clients. Yeah, and I can firmly say I, I will never take full credit for whatever it is by my clients achieve because they then right earn the right to place in all the dedication and commitment and effort to that level of mastery to get to where they are, right? And every single thing that they do brought them to where they are today. And that's why I always like to say that you are only a product of the decision you made yesterday, last week, last month, last year. And the only way you know what decisions that you make on a daily basis, some, questions, some friends, right, you go about asking your friends, like, hey, what decision did you make yesterday? They'll probably like, 
I don't even know what I eat yesterday. <laughs> my people won't even know what they ate yesterday. And I'm very clear of what I eat actually because I have to track. Like my personal trainer gets me to track every single meal. Right. <laughs> but aside from that, it's really about reflecting on a daily basis, right? What can you do better? What's working now? What doesn't work? Like what works better? What is it that you like? What is it that you want? Where do you see yourself three years down the road? If you start asking yourself questions over and over again, you have to confront to something that you're not clear on. People are afraid to reflect most of the time because they, they have to confront something that's uncomfortable. They have to confront something that in the past, right, they, they didn't want to dig up. But now they have to go and talk about it. They have to pen down their thoughts and feelings about it. But it's because you are able to walk through that mess that you are able to go through a clear path forward. Yeah. So hopefully that answers your question. It is a very unsexy answer, by the way. It's a very <laughs> unsexy answer. And I, and I refuse to ever give a sexy or flamboyant answer simply because that is the truth. I just reflect and that's how I got to where I am. Yeah. Fantastic. Can, can I tell you something, Darius? If you were just giving me superficial uh, answers, we would have stopped this uh, conversation a long time ago. All right. The one thing that I've picked up on you is not only are you enlightened, but you really live up to the values of living the best life possible. You've learned enough for you to be able to have the confidence to give this sort of information and you are contributing for other people that might not have the experience and the expertise that you are on your way to getting up. So don't ever think that people that show up in Lamborghinis or fancy, um, you know, presentations are the ones that are actually doing well. I think between you and me, we know they are, those things are either borrowed or there's a lot of debt going on behind the scenes. Now talking about contribution, all right. One of the things that you want to do is to develop a hundred thought leaders and you want to impact a um, hundred thousand people daily by 2030. Don't you think this is a little bit too small for the kind of person that you are right now? I don't think it's too small. I think it's something that I still want to enjoy and still want to take my time doing it. I'm not too concerned about the angle, to be very honest. I think a lot of people are always very focused on the result. But to me, I see the process as the result. And I always like to repeat that the process, the practice that you're doing on a daily basis is the result. Because I don't really care too much about, you know, am I really going to hit that goal? But what are we doing on a constant daily basis that allows us to hit that goal? Because whatever that we do on a daily basis will allow us to become a totally new identity, right? You talk about do, uh, you talk about be, do, have, right, just now. <laughs> and so we, we practice what we preach as well, right? It's all about the process of becoming. It's always about the process rather than the end goal. And the reason why we want to do this is very simple. We just not talk about fake gurus and things like that, right? <laughs> there are a lot in the market and there's a rising trend, a worrying trend of people, you know, bashing the coaching industry, bashing the consulting industry. My journey isn't to go about exposing all these groups, to be honest. Uh, as much as possible, I just go about giving tips to avoid uh, such people that might not be the best experts out there in the market and selling a dream. My whole purpose is to get the industry back on the same road and get, get the industry back on the great road going forward. Kind of like making the industry great again in that sense. <laughs> Suddenly thought of Donald Trump, I have no idea why. <laughs> First time I actually thought about that. So that's a good question to ask. But instead of go about going about exposing experts in the market, I realized most of the time these experts get exposed because their marketing is way too overhyped. Right? They promise like the world and then they deliver something that is not the world. <laughs> they promise the world, they give you a country, example. Right? So I realized that most of the time, the problem is over-aggressiveness in marketing. Over-aggressiveness in marketing. And that's why I never ever like over-aggressive marketing because it's not me. The only, the most of the time, what I'll be telling you to do is that, hey, I got this offer, but you should not come in and I'll keep dissuading you from coming in. <laughs> The way I go about marketing is dissuading you from coming in simply because I do not want to overhype. I do not want to oversell. I do not want you to think that this is going to be a magic pill. It is never a magic pill. We have 100% success rate. I don't think anyone in the industry probably has that. But the reason why I do that is because I work with a very specific group of people that have qualities and standards that meet what I do. And that's why I'll say I'm not a good fit. I'm great at giving podcasts, sharing experiences. That's what I want to do. But I'm not a great fit when it comes to client, uh, client and coach relationship, client coach and client consultant relationship for like 99% of the people on the planet. I can safely say that. 
<laughs> I can safely say that. Yeah. So my whole goal is to get all these coaches and all these experts back onto the same boat to focus most of the time in delivering for their clients rather than on marketing. Because most experts will always tell you what? Focus 80% of your time on marketing. Focus 80% of your time on marketing and sales. They always tell you that, right? Focus most of your time on marketing and sales because that's how your business survives. I don't really agree with that. Focus 80% on delivering for your clients and your clients will deliver back on you by introducing other clients to you. Yeah. So this is the contrary that I'm going against with like probably 95% of the market. Because most experts and gurus will probably hop on the show and probably they'll share this, they'll share with you that, hey, spend most of the time on marketing and sales because those are your lifeline in your business. I agree. It's a lifeline of my business. But I have created a system so far that I've spent about 10% of my whole, uh, my whole journey so far on marketing. And I'm able to get fully booked with clients every single month, every single week. I won't say, I won't say every single week because I launch. So every single month, every few months. Yeah. And so my whole purpose is to help people to focus 80% of the time giving back to the clients. And that's how we get the industry back to where it once was, where it was a lot of value, no fluff, no bullshitting here and there. Simply because I spend most of my time delivering for my clients rather than most of my time marketing. Because if you spend most of your time marketing means that you're not spending time with your clients, right? You're just spending time on writing, copywriting, ads and things like that don't really help your client. What helps your clients most is you placing that time, effort and resources to invest into whatever it is that you have to give and deliver to your clients. Yeah. And so that's my purpose, shifting from 80% marketing to 80% deliverability. And it's a huge mountain to climb, but I'm all up for it. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, obviously, if you're going to be delivering a world-class service, then you will actually attract people that pay, stay, and refer. Now, I mean, at the end of the day, we might keep going on and on. I'm really enjoying this call and, um, you know, the, the insights that are actually coming through from you. And more than anything else, I think I've actually learned a great deal about what it is that is actually happening in the marketplace there and what other people are experiencing and you know what I mean, how uh, the market is actually responding. And what I picked up on a lot of what you're saying is we get paid in direct proportion to the value that we're bringing into the marketplace there. It's not exactly about what does the market have in store for me, it's what do we actually um, bring back to the market that we actually get paid for. Now, somebody might be listening to this uh, call and saying, oh my God, Darius is so young. I'm inspired. I'm really um, at, sitting at the edge of my seat and wanting to know what else is going to be next um, with this young man here. What can people expect from you, say, in the next five years or seven years um, you know, just given where you are right now at 22 and you're already a trailblazer, what, what's in store, um, you know, with Mr. Tan there? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's good. That's a good question as well. <laughs> Next three to five years, uh, vision for us is really to build a mastermind filled with all the best experts in around Southeast Asia. And so that's exactly why I work with very a very specific group of people. I keep repeating it again and again, because I don't want someone to listen to the podcast and think like, oh, you know, uh, I want to work with Darius and then after that, then they realize that, oh shit, Darius don't really, don't, wouldn't really take me on. And it's not because you're not good, it's just because I might not be the best person to help you. And I will, I will readily admit that I'm not the best person to help for a lot of people because I can come off as very hardcore. I can come off as very, very hardcore and very, very aggressive, not in marketing, but when it comes to the business. Because I am very determined on whoever that comes in, we will do whatever it takes, whatever it fucking takes to get to where you want to go. And so my three-year vision, uh, three-year vision, five-year vision is really to build the number one community uh, when it comes to um, experts and uh, coaches and consultants in the Southeast Asia industry. And really to have this group of people focusing 80% of the time when it comes to deliverability instead of sales, marketing, and operations. And that's why we are called strategic scaling systems, simply because we use systems to go about running their marketing, their sales and operations so that we free up their time and they can spend on what they do best, what they enjoy best, which is serving to their clients and customers. Yeah. So that's ultimately our very, very clear three-year vision in terms of collecting, once again, go, go back to 100 thought leaders, right? Our vision is 50, 50 leaders in the next three years. So yeah, that's the direction we're heading towards. Absolutely. And I really like the clarity that you have because have you ever noticed when you're driving a car, 
the front windscreen is bigger than the small rear view mirror because you have to have a clear vision of where you're going instead of looking at the past of um, where you have been. But I want us to look in the rear view mirror a little bit just so we can conclude this podcast here, Darius. If let's say you were to lose just about everything, you were to lose your name, you were to lose your team, you were to lose your business, your website, maybe you go in there and you type something and it everything else decides to disappear. You lose your followers, you lose just about everything else um, that you have built. Where would you start? Where would I start? Uh, I'll probably start with TikTok and YouTube, <laughs> honestly speaking. Uh, people think that I would do the same thing again. No, I wouldn't. Why? Uh, people who say that they'll do the same thing over again and share what, uh, and share the same thing again, is not really a very updated advice in the current economy. In the current economy, I'll do a combination of TikTok and YouTube, simply because TikTok will help me get a lot of virality when it comes to uh, creating posts. And then I can channel all that traffic onto YouTube. And YouTube will allow me to build authority and credibility a lot faster by leveraging on TikTok as well. There are people that I know that uh, have about 1 million or 2 million or 3 million subscribers on YouTube simply because they were freaking famous on TikTok. Yeah. So to me, I will just leverage on what's happening now, which means that this podcast might not be so relevant maybe two, three, four, five years from now. But if you're listening to this now, yeah, that's the daily combination that I'll take on. Uh, TikTok together with YouTube, that's a very high level of monetization and very high level of reach that you can get from there. I would even focus on Facebook and uh, Instagram or Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, to be very honest. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a very high level overview. I'm not sure if you're looking for step by step, but that was a very high level overview. <laughs> oh, no. That, of that, what was, that was, I appreciate that. I mean, obviously, we could go on and on, but at the end of the day, I really want to thank you so much for your time on the podcast today. And I just want to address the audience right now because I can understand that growing your business can be a very tough endeavor. Some of us are probably out there cold calling potential clients and having them hang up in our face, or maybe we're sending hundreds of emails, you know, without getting as much as a, Hey, thank you, Darius for uh, sending me this information, or we're wasting thousands of dollars on ad spend without even generating any qualified leads. And sometimes it might actually just feel like no one wants to buy what it is that we're selling. But if you were listening to this podcast and you were actually paying attention to Darius, he is actually creating for and relating to his audience because he's identified who that audience is, he's clarified his message, and now he's just reaching out to them in different medias. Like he's just mentioned TikTok and YouTube, which are um, prevalent in this day and age. But once you've got your message down pegged and you've clarified your message, it makes it super easy to reach out to your audience organically and they will reciprocate with their credit cards. Now, Darius, this has been phenomenal. This podcast has been one of the best podcasts I've had with somebody who actually hasn't celebrated their 25th birthday. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Tell Thank me you so something. Much for Tell me something between you, me, and the next person who's watching right about now. How do you learn all this stuff? Hardcore level of learning and execution. And by learning, I mean really finding a good mentor. By learning, I mean really finding a good mentor. Uh, I understand that there are a lot of uh, tough experts to find out there. But when you find a great mentor, the trajectory of your path changes. And to find a great mentor is to think about getting clarity first, getting clarity of where you want to be three years or five years down the road and asking yourself who has done it, who has been there to where I want to go. To whoever that has been there and done that, go and seek for their mentorship. Yeah. And a lot of times people are afraid that, oh, you know, uh, mentorship, you have to pay. Yes, if they are coached, then most likely you have to pay. Okay, but if let's say it's a mentor that doesn't have like a coaching service or consulting service, it's like doing something else right now, right? But you really want to learn from him. I sincerely believe in just opening your heart and then just sharing with him why exactly you want him as your mentor. Because that's how I found my one of my first mentors. I literally went to send him a really, really long text. I kid you not. It's like, you can keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. It's probably maybe 
2K, 3K words. It's kind of like an essay, but sent in a text. It's so long that WhatsApp didn't even allow me to send it. <laughs> it's that long. Yeah, and I really just poured my heart out in terms of like why I wanted him to be my mentor, like why I, I believe that he's the best mentor for me at this current stage, why I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I just went on to share my intention of why I wanted him to be my mentor, and I just went to seek out for him immediately. I think a lot of times we are just over over analyzing and overthinking about some things that we want to do, and we are just scared of rejections. But uh, if you're gonna be scared of rejections, then I'll say don't even come into the entrepreneurship world because you will meet objections day in day out, week in and week out. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a man on a mission. All right, and his mission is to build systems so they can free up your time yet maximizing results in marketing, sales and in your day-to-day -day lives. I've never been so educated and amazed all in one space. Um, and I really appreciate you coming on the show today, Darius. And awesome, man. Thank you so much for actually inviting me onto the show to, be, to, to begin with. And I'm happy that I'm able to provide you the wisdom or value that your audience seeks out as well. Yeah. So if you want to stay in contact with me, once again, just go to strategicscalingsystems.com. Or you can actually subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've been putting out uh, videos every single week. Like what I say, right? if I start all over again, what would I be doing YouTube? I just started YouTube like one, two months back in terms of, uh, of posting every single week. So I post like videos on marketing and sales as well. If you want to dive deeper, I actually break down step by step in each of those videos. You can go about watching them. And I share some of my actual stories that have uh, been through in my business as well and what people can do. So if you want to hear more or learn more as well from my teachings and you want to see whether this guy is real or not, <laughs> you can go and look at my YouTube as well. If not, strategicscalingsystems.com is the best place to go. Yeah. Absolutely. 